What is good guys, it is Reed and welcome back to a highly requested video. Finally, I'm gonna make a little bit of a video on the bottom deal. Now, I do have to say this will not be a full tutorial. I apologize, the bottom deal I use is Madison's and I just don't feel right exposing or teaching his bottom deal when he has a wonderful masterclass that you should definitely purchase. This video is just gonna be my tips, tricks, and how to troubleshoot a lot of the issues that I know people have with the bottom deal. I was thinking about just making this a quick video and just saying go buy Madison's masterclass because I do highly recommend it and that's gonna you know help you with a lot of stuff but I do think I can touch on a lot of these issues that I know people have in a, in a broad sense and really give you some good little tips and how to practice so that's what this video is gonna be my thoughts and tips and you know I've had so many people ask me to make a bottom deal tutorial and so this is as close as we're gonna get for the time being uh, I wish I could teach it to you guys but uh, at the moment, I think this will be a great video. It'll give you guys a lot of insight if you're practicing. I'm gonna to try to you know, adapt these tips to all different kinds of bottom deals that you could be doing, whether you're doing Erdenay's, Madison, Strike, bottom deal, whatever it happens to be. Let's not waste too much time talking. Let's get into the bottom deal, one of my favorite moves of all time, and I absolutely love it, so let's get into it. All right, let me show you my bottom deal real quick. We'll take the four aces, cap them on the bottom of the deck, and I will deal a couple of hands. And we should have all four aces right there. So to start off, I want to discuss the different types of bottom deals that you know this might apply to. Obviously there's lots of different ways, but the three most common, and I think that this video will help a lot, would be the Madison bottom deal, the Erdenay's bottom deal, and the uh, strike bottom deal. So let's first start out with the grip here. Now the grip is really important and probably the most important thing. So you want to start with the uh, top right corner of the deck right on that middle finger third knuckle right there. So right there on the corner, right? You can see that up nice and close. This is going to go this corner back here, the bottom left, is going to go right into that crotch of the thumb. And you're going to apply a lot of pressure between that middle finger and that thumb, basically so you can turn the deck over with just that. The middle finger should be basically contacting every card and the crotch of the thumb as well. So look, only those two points of contact I can completely hold on to the deck. Okay? So that's about the, the rough position. It needs to be some firm pressure, but not you know insane. Just enough you can kind of hold the deck like that. That's a good test. If you can do this, you're in a good place to you know be able to bottom deal pretty well. The index finger now is going to curl up just loosely on the front, thumb on the side of the deck, you know, or just on top, wherever you're comfortable with your dealing um, for your thumb. And then these two fingers are going to just rest on the side of the deck here. Now, depending on how you do this, your Erdnays, you might have your knuckles curled up underneath kind of do the kick out or if you're doing Madison you'll have the sort of Spock grip kind of thing going on here where these fingers will be eventually moving and if you're doing a strike well you'll probably have a gap somewhere in here where you'll be coming and pulling out those bottom cards from so you know other things for the grip you do want to have a little bit of a bevel on the deck right so when you put the deck in your in your hand the thumb is gonna bevel it over a bit like this so now there's a nice diagonal where that middle finger is gonna be up against. So you bevel, and the middle finger curls nicely around that. What this does is a couple of things. It helps you gain contact with more cards, and it pushes a window over top here to help prevent finger flash. So if the deck was nice and square, these fingers are gonna be moving like crazy, but now if I bevel, you can see they're, they're hidden underneath that bevel because they have this whole sort of roof to hide them. So the bevel is definitely important. I tend to bevel a little bit uh, to the side and forward as well. So I kick this back corner forward. So it's it's a it's a the, the bevel's not just to the to the right. It's actually from the back and to the right a little bit. So it kind of just looks like that. And I find that that helps me personally with my bottom deal, something you can definitely try out. Once you're in that position, you should start just doing fair deals like this and get really comfortable with this, especially if this grip is not you know, comfortable for you, then you really need to get in that position with the bevel, these two fingers on the front, I'll show you those fingers on the side, I'll try to give you a nice view of everything. And just start fair dealing, right? If you can do a second deal, you can also start practicing your seconds, just like this, right? In that same grip. So you do fairs, seconds, 
And that's actually a good place to start and you know, work your second deals into that grip. And that'll actually help you fair dealing, second dealing, fair dealing, second dealing, right? And it'll get you comfortable with dealing in that grip. Now again, I'm not gonna cover the mechanics of either the Spock or the Erdenays or whatever you tend to do, but that is sort of the grip and the grip will obviously change a bit if you're doing Erdenays, you, you might be holding the deck more of like a standard kind of grip standard mechanics grip but i do recommend the two fingers on the front i do think it helps and i've heard people say oh that's not natural no one deals that way well actually um i deal that way all the time card games uh, all the time i deal that way now i've you know I'm, i've converted myself and a lot of people do deal that way and that's the that's the ticket if you're gonna do this for the bottom deal, you just gotta learn how to change your deal so it always looks like this. You can go back to any one of my videos, you will see me dealing like this. Now, the biggest issue that I think people have is what I'm gonna call deck slip. So that's when you're going through and the cards start to slip out of your hand because you don't have enough pressure between the middle finger and that crotch of the thumb. So the cards start to either slide out the side or slide out the front or out the back. So the biggest correction to that is gonna be that pressure. So like I said, a good drill is make sure that when you set the deck in to the positioning where that front corner is on that third joint here, and the back corner just falls right into where your thumb, if you close your thumb, there's a nice line right there where the, the you know, kind of muscle of the thumb is. That should be where the bottom corner goes, top corner. Of course, adjusting a little bit depending on hand size. But now you should be able to do this. If you're doing that, that's a really good sign. Another thing you can do is go with a smaller deck, try bottom dealing, and does this happen when you're doing it with a smaller packet? Now, I wouldn't really recommend you practice with a smaller packet because then you're using that as a crutch, but it's a good test. And if it's not happening with a smaller packet, that means you have the pressure right at the bottom half of the deck, but not the top half of the deck. I remember for me, it used to happen with like the first five to 10 cards maybe, and slowly I would improve and it would only happen with the first couple of cards where I'd have a lot of issues with slip until eventually you get it and honestly the best tip there is you just got to keep practicing once you're sure that you have that pressure down you just have to work on building that muscle so you get more pressure at the top near your fingertip obviously as you move out you're getting weaker right so once you've tested and you can test this you can add different portions of the deck back into your hand and figure out where your slip starts and if it's you know the first 10 cards if it's 20 cards deep how and where your your deck slip is is happening um, another thing that's happening, especially if you're using the Madison grip, you'll be getting these fingers out of the way, right? Even with the Erdnase, these fingers are out of the way. So now this entire right side of the deck is exposed and it's easy for the deck to fall because normally you're, you're gripping these fingers on the side. So that's something you're not used to. And that's again why if this middle finger is too far in the front, you'll only be applying pressure this way, right? Front and back and the cards can fall out the side. If it's on the side only, then it could fall at the back because you're only applying pressure this way. So it needs to be on that diagonal corner. Make sure it's on the corner so that now you're applying pressure on the angle so there's a force component going this way and this way, right? So now when you move these fingers out of the way, the deck is still getting supported from falling out this way by the middle finger, right? It's pushing in against it. Because that's one of the biggest things when you're going to get your, your steel of the bottom card, right? Or you're pushing it off, there's nothing supporting this edge. So that's why you need the middle finger there to push everything back against it. And then you can hit your deals. Really, it's gonna come down to practice. You need to put a lot of hours into this move to get it looking at all decent. So once you've taken care of deck slip, which I think is the biggest issue, and again, it's just gonna come with practicing dealing. What I used to like to do is just deal, deal the first five bottom cards and then just reset them and just keep going because the top, or the first few bottoms of a full deck are going to be the hardest because that's when you're most likely to have that deck slip issue, right? Now, I've explained to you why it happens. You don't have any force component of your fingers pushing the deck back into your hand when you move the fingers away to get your steel in no matter what grip you do. So the deck's fully exposed and it's going to fall. One little tip, if you're doing the Madison in particular, as you steal, right, you've stolen the card out, grip the deck again, and then come in here and slide that card up and out along those fingers. So now, the second you've stolen the card, these fingers are back to gripping the deck and you just come underneath and you pull that card out. So there's not, you know, instead of just keeping those fingers out of the way as you're constantly dealing and then the deck starts to slip, each time you deal a card, I'm gonna come readjust so now I have the, the fingers back here, you know, applying that force again, and then they're only gone for a split second, but they're back. Instead of just 
keeping them down there and doing the stealing, right? And they're never re-gripping to keep that, that deck in your hand, if that sort of makes sense. That's something that can help and eventually you'll just, you'll get over that and you won't need to do that and then you'll be able to, you know, hit your consecutive bottom deals faster. Um, that's one of the things that if you wanna hit consecutive bottom deals, you have to, you know, start to avoid resetting these fingers each time but it does help with deck slip. So then there's the issue of hangers or when you're grabbing air which a hanger is when you take a card and you, you don't grip it with your hand and it sticks there, sticks out, obviously really bad or kind of grab an air when you come in and you don't take anything because you missed it so typical problems there is if you're grabbing air there's or even hangers you're applying too much pressure here and usually that's because you're worried about deck slip so as it's coming you feel the deck start to slip so you grip your hands in and then the card gets stuck as you try to pull it that can be an issue um there you just have to work on your deck slip you're, you know the deck sliding out of your hand and eventually you'll be able to come with a really light pressure and barely even you know hold the cards and it's really easy the other thing is obviously if these fingers don't grip it tight enough and they just kind of slide a big thing that can happen is when you push the cover card over and the bottom card, then the thumb's gonna come on top here, right? And the thumb is gripping this and this is gripping the bottom one and then you pull and they never make contact. What happens when they make contact is the thumb is pushing both of those cards and, it's, and then you're pulling out the bottom one. But if these fingers never make contact, there's nothing to grip. Like you, you can try this. If you never bring these together, you can't grip. They have to come together to be able to grip either the top or the bottom card, in this case the bottom. But it, you know you don't grip hard enough here so that these don't come together and then they just slip away right so you need to make sure the grip is, is strong enough and then obviously sweat or like if the pads of your fingers are really dull you know sometimes before i'm gonna hit some bottoms just wipe that off and make sure that uh i i can come and you know have a nice grip on each one of the cards right that's that's another thing to consider knuckle flash well if you're doing urdenes you know you're gonna have pretty much that knuckle flash the Madison would be, you know, this is me doing the Madison. You can see there's no, it, you know, it really eliminates the knuckle flash. That's why I do recommend that one as the, uh, the king of the bottom deals in my mind. But problems, I mean, at the end of the day, the layman are not typically going to notice too much knuckle flash. Like, I don't think it's as serious of a deal if you're just a magician performing for layman. But it is something to consider. Um, and, you know, for me, I'm sure there are ways, but for me, I just, I've never had to worry about it because of the type of bottom deal that I do. So now when I bottom deal from this side, it is completely invisible because I don't have any knuckle flash, right? Now the opposite of that though is finger flash, which on this side, and especially if you're using the Madison, it does apply for both. But with the Urdenes, it's kind of more hidden under here and the Madison, it's more out here. So you do have that sort of issue of the finger flash. Now, there's a few tips there. So one of course is that bevel. That bevel, as you can see, let's see if I, if I don't do it, watch the finger flash. You can see it. Now if I do bevel the deck, it's much less noticeable, right? Under there it's all kind of hidden so that's a big thing and that'll help you hide it from all the way on this side to all the way in the front it only really becomes a problem when you come out here I'm gonna still do this with a lot of finger flash just to you know make a point here but even if I'm doing a lot of finger flash and I'm doing it fast you don't really see it as much because just as the fingers are pulling this hands kind of coming and then they're kind of back in position right so you do see it a bit but if you're going fast and you get the rhythm right and you have some nice rhythm here it does hide it can help to, of course, bevel and tilt down like this, and then that does completely hide it. Um, and even if you're tilted down from this angle, it does help. So um, that's kind of segues into the next tip. If you have your bevel, and instead of being level, you tilt down towards the table, tilt it in a bit. That does help hide the finger flash from that angle, which kind of makes you 180 degrees covered. So that's a great tip. But the biggest thing that's gonna happen is as you get better, instead of doing this, right, every time, or the big push motion to get that card out, with a lot of force, you're gonna be able to do this. And that's all you need, right? Boom, that's like, I, I barely have to move cards anymore. It's just kind of looks like, boom, that's as much as I need. I don't need to pull the card all the way out to here anymore. You know, you get better at that with practice, so it's just, just a tiny little bit. And then the fingers can be very lightly applied. They don't have to be this big force anymore. It's just a very light, just push it out of the way and you're good to go. So now you're making very small movements and the, the fingers, instead of being like this, are just barely moving underneath. Like if I do this really slow, I'm barely moving the fingers. Like it's just like tiny bit. 
just kind of like this each time, like barely, barely moving them. And that all comes with practice. Now for rhythm, I think the rhythm is really important. I cover this in my second deal video, but you don't want to be conducting an orchestra, nor do you want to be dead still. You want to have a, you know, Madison talks about this a lot. You want to have a little bit of a, little bit of a, the hands coming together, but instead of kind of going like this, like Madison does, I tend to just flick this wrist back almost with each time I deal. You see how that kind of looks different? I think it's just, uh, it works better. I just kind of, it just almost kills for like a split second. And it happens so fast you barely notice it, right? So when it comes to bottom dealing now, it, uh, it, it helps. So you have a bit of a visual deception now when the bigger motion covers a smaller motion when you're bottom dealing, right? which is always great. And I would incorporate this rhythm into all of your deals, right? So when I do fair deals, it looks like that a little bit. You can see the wrist kind of coming back and these hands kind of meeting just a little bit. Now when I hit the bottom deals, it looks the same. And when I hit the second deals, it looks the same as well. And then the next one we come to is sound, which again is gonna be a similar point to the second deal video. Listen to your bottom deal. You're probably gonna have the same sound. The second deal is sort of a swoosh, as it swooshes out between the two. The fair deal has a not much of a sound and the bottom deal has a more of a click or like a scrape as it scrapes up against this top card so what you want to do is you want to make that fair deal have that same sound where you come down and have that scrape slash swoosh sound as you deal it so now you go fair bottom and those sounded exactly the same to me right so that was a fair and a bottom a fair and a bottom so Right? I just bottom deal the last one there and it didn't really didn't really sound too out of place, right? So you just practice that. This segues nicely into the last point of just match your fair deals, your second deals, and your bottom deals. You make the rhythm look the same, you make the thumb movement look the same, and then you make the sound look the same. And that's kind of a more advanced thing to worry about, but it is something to consider. So now you can go around and do a fair deal, second deal, bottom deal, fair deal, second deal, bottom deal, fair deal, second deal, bottom deal. And it all sounds the same, it all looks the same, and it's very congruent. Now I'll quickly touch on stud bottom dealing. So I, I can't remember, I know there's one that you flip this way and one that you flip overhand this way. I forget which one is stud and I forget the name of the other one, so whatever. Um, but when you're dealing cards face up, so with that, when you come over top, now you're gripping at the back with the thumb here. If you're flipping it this way, and this one you need a little bit more wrist kill because if you leave it face up, it's kind of more obvious where it's coming from. Now when I do that, it's just gonna look like this. And you have your cards. Now if you're doing it the other way, it's more similar. You're just coming in, you're striking the same way, and you're just flipping it out forward. So there's not really much difference. That one's obviously easier. Now consecutive bottom deals is another thing people struggle with a lot. And for that, honestly, you just gotta practice, get better. You have to be able to have no deck slip because if the deck slips, you won't have that chance to readjust, right? That's a big thing. A lot of people, they'll hit their card and then they'll close these fingers to you know grip the deck back into their hand. But if you do that, you're gonna be too slow between the consecutive bottom deals to be able to hit them at any kind of speed right like that it's very important to you know get that deck slip and then get good at just small movements so it's just like this over and over and you can just hit the cards at this speed so then you barely have any time to wait and you can just come and hit a bunch of consecutive bottom deals like that now how to practice the bottom deal my favorite drill is this one where you go fair deal second deal and bottom deal right so I'll show you guys that slow fair second bottom. So now it's speed, it's fair, second, bottom, fair, second, bottom, fair, second, bottom. And that's a great way. Film it too, watch yourself back, see how it looks on film. That's the best way to see how your bottom deal looks and it's stacking up. You can look for the finger flash, the knuckle flash, and all the little nuances and make sure your timing's good. You can even get the sound. So that's my recommendation for practicing. You know, film yourself and do those kind of drills where you're doing your fair bottom seconds back to back or just fair and bottoms if you're just practicing the bottom deal. And just sit there and deal through a deck of cards, right? hit bottom deals, the whole deck, and it might look like this, right? This I remember my, I used to practice like this. And I drop a bunch and I just, you just get through it. You get through the whole deck, right? And you just, you, you, you go through it no matter what. And then eventually, you know, you'll get to that point where you can just come 
and bottom deal through a whole deck of cards with no issue, right? So those are my tips and troubleshooting on the bottom deal. So I hope you guys found that helpful, found that useful. Those are my troubleshooting tips and my uh, strategies to practice and all kinds of things on the bottom deal. And I hope they were helpful for you and answered a lot of your questions. Hopefully you can you know, adapt these tips to whatever style of bottom deal you use and hopefully they were advantageous. Again, I highly recommend Madison's Masterclass and also check out my second deal tutorial because it does cover some of these things in a bit more detail and they do apply to the bottom deal as well. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to send me an email. If you would like a private lesson where we can go over the bottom deal, send me an email, rf.slights at gmail.com. We can set up a private lesson and we can get your bottom deal well on its way because it is a tough move, but it's super great. One of the best moves. You can do so much with it. Absolutely incredible. So guys, I want to welcome all the new subs. I appreciate you all, each and every one of you for subscribing. We are getting close to 2K and I cannot wait. So with all that said, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.